for five years now. The very first time I ever got on stage, it was very, 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 very scary. I can remember what I wore. It was in the summer, and I had a tank top on, and I just knew that the people could see my heart pounding through my chest, but it was like some sort of adrenaline. You know how it is when you first get your eyebrows done, and you're like, yeah. Coming to the stage is your girl, Tyree Lane. <laughs> They are so positive. They are the only people I know who give bad news like it hurts. They do a show bad news, but they give it to you like it causes them pain. They, your card's been declined. <laughs> yeah, we ran it through. It's, yeah. Why <laughs> are you in pain? I'm the one that got to wash dishes. I don't understand. So now all I do is go to white church, white everything. I can't do black church no more. I'm sorry. Praise and worship is entirely too long. I be clapping. Like, can we at least sit down? We've been here since March. Can we just sit? I'm not even asking to leave. Can we sit? I can't stand when I'm in praise and worship and the praise leader goes, you could do better than that. It's like, how do you know I could do better than this here? <laughs> like, what if I had a condition where this is the hardest and the fastest I could clap? You don't know that. This is it. You could do better than that. I can't stand that. I really can't. It bothers my spirit. I can't. I like to follow those people, pastors out of the church, like physically follow them in my car, out of the church parking lot, into traffic. I like to tailgate them, cut them off, swerve, all of that, wait for them to cuss me out, and they will. You must, I go, Bishop, you could do better than that. Don't let the devil use you. <laughs> Other thing I can't stand, preachers say, I can't stand when they say, in church, I don't know what you come to do, but I came to praise God. Because though everybody else came for the live band or the dance floor at the end, I don't know. I don't know what you come to do. I remember Fred Hammond performed at my church about three years ago. It was a Saturday. The flyer said 7.30, Saturday night, Fred Hammond live concert, okay? It's 9.15, there's no sign of Fred Hammond. I don't even think he's in the building. Matter of fact, the bishop gets on stage and starts preaching, like full on preaching, turn your Bible to. I said, oh no, bishop, I don't know what you come to do, but I came to see Fred Hammond, am I? To get off stage. Now all I do is go to white church. Don't go to white church acting black. They don't like it. And you wouldn't know, you know, sometimes it's confusing. I went to visit a white church and they had a white lady guest speaker, but she had to be from the South because she was preaching like a black man. She was doing all the heavy breathing, all the, all the little, I don't know, I gotta know what it's done for me. It's like these white people wasn't giving her nothing. They in the crowd like, we don't know, what is it? We never, we don't, what is it? I'm the only one in white church giving this lady what she want. I'm, yes! Hallelujah! That's it! You better preach! Glory to God! Somebody came and said, I have to ask you to leave. Yeah, are these Yeah, you. Stop putting your relationships on Facebook. We don't want to see it. Stop broadcasting your happiness. I can't stand it. Am I the only one? I can't stand this. Me and Babe at the comedy show. Me and Boo at the Boiling Crab. Team Us at church. Me and Hubby at the picnic. Hubby. Child ain't more married than the man in the moon. Hubby. can't stand that. If you're going to do that, take pictures of everything. Okay? Take a picture of you crying when he leave you. Okay? We want to see it all. We have a right to know. We want to know the whole story. Okay? Am I the only one who kind of get off on seeing people go from in a relationship to single home. I like to see what happened. I like to look at the statuses before the breakup so I can see if I can see the breakup coming. I do. You can. If it's a black lady, you can. It'd be three in the morning. I hate liars. Hashtag done. Oh, yeah. It'd be the pre-breakup status. I mean, is it me? Question mark. Look. These are texts, not statuses. The Facebook tutorial before you get on there. Don't just be on there typing up, uh, I mean, why didn't you just tell me you loved her? This is a status. I be wanting to go, who are you talking about? But then, you know, it's weird. Can't stand the statuses after the breakup. They be so pretentious. They do. They want to keep it together for the sake of Facebook. They do. Be so fake. Good morning, Facebook fam. Headed to work. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Every aspect of like gym flow, about to go to the gym, keep it tight for my future husband. God's preparing them. All of a sudden, they're God's best friend. They didn't change their name to uh, Kenya. Can't nobody do me like Jesus, James. Like, when did this happen? <laughs> it'd 
ain't been to church since the last time you ain't had no man. When did this happen? It's relationships. I used to be horrible in relationships. This is what I used to believe, okay? This is what I used to believe. I felt like, well, you know what? If I'm gonna cheat on whoever I'm with, I'm gonna be responsible and I'm gonna do it with somebody who looks like my man. That way, if I get pregnant, I got a pretty good chance of getting away with it. This is how I thought before a guy got a hold of me. You better thank it. I can still be running the streets with this mentality. I'm for real, I really felt like that. I felt like it's a double standard. And I still do feel like it's a double standard between men and women. Men get away with so much more you know, been, been women, obviously. I was with a guy three and a half years. He goes overseas to play ball for about a year. Now they had no proof that he was cheating. But you know how you just know? You know, because you're doing it, so you know the behavior to look for. You go, I turn my phone off at midnight, and I know what I'm doing. No, but for real, he's gone for a year. I figured he's been with some women. So I ask him, we've been together too long. I'm like, look, we friends. Tell me. I pick him up from the airport. I'm like, look, I'm not going to trip. Tell me. He tells me. I'm surprised, told me the truth. That was novel. <laughs> I was like, okay, he told me I was with about 12 women. 12 women, I figured, I'm like, okay, carry the one a year. Yeah, that sounded about right. I didn't trip. Nothing, I, I didn't trip. The problem came when he said, well, how many men was you with? When I was gone, I pulled over to the gas station where it was lit and a whole bunch of people. <laughs> Just in case. I don't know what goes down overseas. And he flips out. The one dude, I mean, he flips out them all kind of names. I was like, yeah, I've been with one, one other dude. I'm all kind of, I didn't say nothing about, you know, but because I told him one other dude, he tripped. It's probably because I had a baby by the dude, but I mean, really, 12 grown women to my one baby. 12 has always been greater than one. I was confused. I, played, I didn't sweat none of your 12 women. You gonna sweat the small stuff? Look at my son's face. He looks just like you. You're welcome. Well, that's my time. My name is Kyrie Lane. You guys have been a wonderful audience.